Great, hi everybody. Um, I'm Tony Willis, I'm a GP in Shepherd's Bush. Um, I'm also the clinical lead for personalization. Uh, in other words, what matters to me. Um, and I'm also a clinical lead for diabetes. So I've done quite a lot of um, kind of uh, thinking about lifestyle medicine and how to support people with some of the, the challenges that they have. So I want to talk about your roles because this slide I think tells me that your roles are really, really important. Uh, if we look at the health outcomes impact and the kind of stuff that I do as a prescriber of medicines, that's kind of like trivial compared with the impact of social factors in people's lives. So if we look at uh, the impact of medical care, it's about 15% of the health outcomes. So what you do is really, really crucial. Uh, so it's fantastic that you're here. Uh, you've got a really important role with the patients that we try and help. So I just want to get that message across, okay? Um, and if we look at the things that determine uh, what people's outcomes are in terms of long-term conditions, chronic disease and so on, there are four lifestyle factors that reduce the risk of chronic disease by 78%. Now, there's no pill, there's no medicine that will do that. So what your role is, is supporting people making those changes, supporting people accessing things that will help them do all of these things. So never smoking, body mass index less than 30, three and a half hours of, per week of physical activity, ideally. And also making sure that people have got, um, are using fruit, vegetables and whole grains and relatively low meat consumption. Uh, I'm not saying no meat, but I'm saying that low meat is good. And if we look around the world at uh, these places called blue zones, the blue zones are where people um, traditionally have lived to about 100, uh, and importantly, they've lived to 100 uh, with very little in the way of chronic disease. And so if we want to learn from them, there are a number of factors that uh, are at play, trying to make sure that you've got uh, things in place that will help reduce the stress levels, a purpose, so waking up in the morning, uh, knowing that you've got something to do. That adds seven years to your life. A plant slant, in other words, trying to uh, have more in the way of fresh fruit and vegetables. Uh, apparently, wine at five. Um, enjoy a glass of wine. That's one of the key things of those areas. Family first. The 80% rule of eating mindfully, but never to more than 80% fullness. Moving naturally. Uh, surrounding yourself with people who have positive behaviours. And then uh, one of the other ones is the faith-based community, which adds four to 14 years to your lifespan. So lifestyle medicine is all about uh, these six pillars, uh, eating healthily, reducing harmful substances, uh, moving more, sleeping better, relaxing more, and increasing connection. And all of those will have a massive impact on things like appetite control, blood pressure, weight, stress, immune function, mood, memory, resilience, and perspective. So the, the kind of challenges that you're facing uh, with the patients you're trying to support, a lot of them are around this sort of stuff. And certainly working with Josh and Phoebe, who are two health coaches at um, our partnership, uh, you know, it's really interesting seeing the sort of stuff that they uh, interact with, the, the kind of patients that they're um, trying to support. And a lot of it is around these areas. So all of this is trying to help uh, the, the patient to answer what matters to me. It might be that they want to lose 10 kilos, they might want to get fitter, they want, might want to be more content. Uh, they might not be sure what they want to achieve, they just want to be happier uh, or more relaxed. So I'm going to talk about some of those. It's going to be a bit of a whistle-stop tour over some of the key lifestyle medicine factors, but I'm going to start uh, talking about healthy eating. Some things that will really help with that. So cutting back refined carbs, reducing processed food, intermittent fasting, and eating more rainbow veg. All of these things will really help. Uh, so they help reduce the body's insulin levels, improving fat burning, improving the gut microbiome. And when I was a medical student, you know, or even probably 10 years ago as a GP, five years ago, uh, the idea that the gut microbiome was a really important part of uh, people's health was just kind of, you know, it's like cuckoo land uh, sort of thing. But now I think there's a rec uh, increasing recognition that this stuff is really important. 
Um, one of the things I talk about quite a bit with patients is around intermittent fasting. People have been fasting for thousands of years and there are very significant benefits. And I just want to draw attention to uh, this one right up at the far right hand side, the autoph autophagy um, or autophagy. Uh, what happens after people have been fasting for 14 hours? The body starts going into a self-repair phase. Um, and so encouraging patients, you know, obviously if they, uh, if they can tolerate it, if there aren't uh, medical conditions to uh, uh, stop them from doing that, can be really helpful. So quite often in our course, uh, we do a thing called Fresh Start with diabetes patients. Um, we're encouraging people to think about intermittent fasting uh, because what it helps do is uh, reduce the insulin levels, reduce the sugar, start burning fat, do this protein repair, repair phase. This is a, a bit of a complicated slide. It's um, from a, a review in the New England Journal of Medicine, which is like the top medical journal about intermittent fasting benefits. I think the key thing here is not to try and read all of the text here, but understand that there are some very significant scientific reasons why this stuff helps. Um, that left-hand middle box there talks about you know, repairing DNA, repairing uh, the immune system, uh, re reducing insulin. So all of these things that really help um, to uh, make the cells more robust and to support uh, the, um, uh, the defense against damage from all kinds of different insults that the body might do. So really, I uh, just want to kind of say that uh, it's a really helpful thing and you can see all the other benefits there around uh, reducing the risk of um, Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease, diabetes, heart disease, certain types of cancer and so on. So massive potential benefits. So I want to talk a little bit about rainbow veg. Uh, again, it's one of the things we talk about quite a lot in patients, real benefits in terms of the gut microbiome. So it doesn't need to be expensive. You can have frozen vegetables, but the key thing is lots of different colors really helps. Um, very briefly going to talk about ultra processed food, uh, which is uh, now seen as one of the harmful substances uh, that um, the British Society of Lifestyle Medicine talk about. 57% of the average UK diet is made up from uh, ultra processed foods and in deprived communities that's often a lot more, it's like 80% or so. And eating higher amounts of these has been linked to all kinds of things like obesity, cancer, type 2 diabetes, you know, again, you know, it's the same stuff that's coming up again and again, depression, mood problems, dementia, early death. And those eating more ultra processed foods are 39% more likely to develop high blood pressure than those, those uh, eating the lowest amounts. They're also 24% more likely to experience serious cardiovascular disease. So again, you know, in your conversations with patients, you know, worthwhile thinking about these, these sort of things. So what can you do? Well, it's worthwhile avoiding that stuff on the left, uh, things that don't sound natural, you know, like hydrolyzed protein. Where do you grow that? Well, you don't. It's made in a factory. Um, soy protein isolate, gluten, casein, whey protein, uh, fructose, high fructose corn syrup. Yeah, you see those on the label, so worth trying to uh, reduce the amount of those. Uh, and trying to eat more of the stuff on the right, so things like fresh, frozen, dried fruit and veg. As I said, it doesn't need to be uh, fresh veg necessarily, but it's, it's helpful if it is. And you can you know, uh, encourage people to use markets and things like that, where fruit and veg is often cheaper than in the supermarkets. So all those stuff on the right are natural products. Um, they are unprocessed things, so the more that people do that, the better. I'm going to talk about uh, getting more active and the benefits of that. Um, so ideally, how much would you do? Ideally, 115, minute, 150 minutes of moderate intensity activity per week. That can be in bouts of sort of 10 minutes or so. Um, and ideally, and this is really important as people get older, uh, and it's something that I really encourage patients to do. In fact, we're going to do a little exercise in just a moment. Um, which is about doing some strengthening activity and um, there's all kinds of ways that people can do that you don't necessarily need to be kind of wearing lycra going to a gym to do that kind of stuff you can just do things uh, in your kitchen 
So there's this guy that I listen to called Rangan Chatterjee, who's a GP, uh, and he does these sort of kitchen exercises. He talks about doing lunges. So what is a lunge? Right. Uh, do you want to stand up? And we can do it all together. Right. So, so the idea is that you just um, uh, follow me. Because I'm not going to, in fact, I can do it on, on this one. Um, so, so we're just going to do a lunge, which is basically just doing that. And then try the other leg. Um, so that stuff is really, you know, it doesn't take a lot to do that. You can do it while you're, um, while you're doing your, make, you know, boiling a kettle or something like that. Just getting, getting people to think about how to bring activity into their daily lives. So what counts as uh, moderate physical activity? All of these things, walking, gardening, hiking, dancing. You know, if people don't want to do, you know, kind of get out and do um, uh, much in the way of kind of running or anything like that, dancing is fantastic. A lot of people love dancing. Uh, we've had some patients who've been doing dancing at home and you know, have managed to lose weight, get fitter, get more active and so on. So all of those things. So what, what benefits does it bring? Well, again, funnily enough, massive benefits. Reduce the risk of dementia by 30%, all-cause mortality by 30%. There isn't a tablet that does that, that's for sure. Um, reduce cardiovascular disease by 35%, all of those things. Colon cancer, yeah, even cancers, 30% reduction. So really important. And, and I think also, um, you know, looking at the sort of mental health factors as well, uh, depression reduces by 30% as well. And a lot of, you know, if you're talking with a lot of people in deprived communities, you know, mental health issues are really frequent. So again, trying to encourage people around that. Had to bring a picture of a cat in here. Um, so sleep, really important. Uh, what does it do? So memories, it improves memory. Actually reduces the risk of dementia again, funnily enough. Uh, ability to concentrate and pay attention, uh, improves muscle recovery, metabolism is regulated uh, in terms of appetite. It's one of the key um, factors that regulates appetite and it also supports mental and physical health. So if we look at sleep, it plays a, a major role in nearly every organ and system in the body. Uh, if you lose sleep, it uh, increases your risk of mortality by 13%. So people who have less than six hours compared with those who have more than seven hours. And it also increases the risk of obesity by 30% if you lose sleep, which is why it it's, can be quite an issue with shift workers. Um, so what can you do to improve sleep? Um, well, stick to a schedule, put away devices, the blue light that um, devices emit uh, is basically like the early morning sun, so it basically wakes you up. Uh, try and make exercise part of your routine, particularly early in the day, if you can. Pay attention to what you eat and drink. So I've stopped drinking caffeine after midday because it's still in the system after that because of its half-life, in other words, the length of time that it lasts and also creating an ideal sleep environment. In other words, dark enough and also not too hot. So ideally sort of 17, 18 degrees max. I'm going to talk very briefly about re relaxation. Again, it's a really important thing. Some significant health benefits from relaxation. All of those things, blood pressure, digestion, sugar levels, stress hormones. Uh, so just trying to encourage people to uh, find a, a quiet time in the day, even if it's just five minutes at the start or the end, just to kind of chill and be still. The other thing that's really good for um, relaxation is nature. Uh, so there's whole stacks of studies that demonstrate that if, you're, if you exercise in a forest, well, we don't have many forests in London, but a park will do with some trees, get out in the park, um, and even looking at a picture of trees, bizarrely, will reduce your stress hormones and cortisol. So cortisol is one of the key hormones that impacts on appetite and so on. So really important stuff. Finally, on to connection. Uh, connection is really important. So si social isolation has uh, significant, if people are socially isolated, 
it increases the risk of premature death uh, from all causes. So in all your conversations, you're trying to get people into uh, places where they can connect with other people is really important. Again, increases the risk of dementia if people are isolated, increases the risk of heart disease, uh, of stroke, depression, anxiety, suicide. So, you know, these things are really, really important. And I think the key message is you've got a crucial role in influencing the health outcomes of the people you're working with more than the GPs that you're working with. So your role is really crucial. So thank you a lot for coming along today. Um, and putting the time in uh, and I just want to get that message across. You've got a really important role and looking forward to seeing what today brings.